Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am Lolita Hayes, the Vintage Starlet. Today I thought we would do a little show and tell. One of my favorite vintage beauty brands that I have never tried is Marvelous by Richard Hudnut. The Marvelous line was created in 1902 with a cold cream originally, but it wasn't until the 30s that the makeup line came along, and it is that makeup line and that packaging that caught my eye originally. After a couple years on the market already, Marvelous then created four groupings of cosmetics that were made to perfectly match you based on your eye color. There was Dresden for blue eyes, Continental for hazel eyes, green eyes, Patrician for gray eyes, and Parisian for brown eyes. The most common products that were bundled in this eye color matching groupings were the face powder, the eyeshadow, mascara, rouge, and of course lipstick. Now we have to take into account the era that these products were introduced, and with that the face powders were the least versatile being that they were mostly peach and pink but that's a discussion for a whole nother video today i'm just here to share with you my small collection i really adore the art deco lines that decorate the products but also i really love the silver kneeling figure that's holding the beauty jar the centralized logo does differ slightly from each packaging one being a silver embossed figure on silver in a circular border to a silver embossed figure on black with an arch in a square border. I'm actually unsure if the difference in these logos is because of the date of manufacturing or if it varied from product to product. It kind of like teeters on both, so I'm, I'm unsure with that. So the initial reason why I started collecting these cosmetic cases was because I planned on restoring them and then just replacing the old makeup with, you know, modern day safe makeup that I prefer. This put me down a rabbit hole. So let's just start off. I was searching for vintage cosmetics in general. And that is when I happened to come across Marvelous again. Of course, I've seen it in old vintage ads in the past, but it was in this search that I was like, you know, I really like that packaging. I really like the art deco, everything about it. And then I just went on a landslide after that. So like I said, I originally wanted to just get empties and restore them so I could just refill them. But then I started seeing ones that still had a little makeup in them, and I was like, hmm, if I get these ones, then I can do like a comparison, a modern dupe, if you will. And then <laughs> it got even worse, because then I would find ones that were pristine, unused, you know, completely, uh, you know, untouched. And those are the ones I had to get. You know, I could still benefit off of looking at the colors and whatnot, but I definitely would not be replacing these. These were completely unused. And I only have five items in my collection currently, but I do plan on getting more when funds become available. So while looking at all these old cosmetic packagings for Marvelous, you realize that the Rouge compacts are the most abundant. So like I said, I wanted to start out with empties, and then I found one that was completely unused. First off, I have my empty one. Now, this one, I don't know if it's newer or older, but it has the circular design. This compact has an inch and a half diameter. It features the kneeling silver figure on a silver textured background surrounded by the circle. You can see that the figure is surrounded by circular grooves that alternate between no grooves, grooves, no grooves, more grooves. The hinge of this product is actually more inlaid and doesn't quite stick out. On the bottom we see it says Marvelous Richard Hudnut, distributor, New York, Paris, made in the USA. On that bottom square is where the sticker saying the name of the product would be. So we open up this little compact of rouge and we see that it includes a mirror. 
And then like I said, since this one is my empty, I planned on cleaning it out, restoring it, and refilling it. So the second Rouge Compact I got was one that was pretty much completely untouched. And when I say completely untouched, I mean you can still see the Richard Hudnut embossing on the Rouge itself. So this compact has the silver kneeling figure on the black background that is encased in a square. The hinge on this compact sticks out more, unlike the other one where it was more encased into the compact itself. When you open it up, this one also has a mirror. You can see that this came with the tiny original poof. The poof has almost like a cardboard, like a really, really thin cardboard backing in silver with Richard Hudnut printed in red. The poof itself has grabbed a hold of some of the original rouge dust on it, so we are able to actually see what color it is. Now while I don't know exactly what the name of this rouge product is, I don't know if this was one for the grouping of the matching of the eyes, or if this was one of its standalone products, but it is a nice orange red, almost a terracotta orange. And as you can see, the Richard Hut nut is still embossed on this. Now taking a closer look, it looks like the rouge is actually in another pan that is then set into this compact, but since it is pretty much untouched, I am not about to dig it out and find out if that pan can be removed or if it's just part of the compact itself. Unlike the other compact, this fully intact one only says Marvelous Richard Hudnut made in the USA on the bottom. So about a year later, I picked up another Marvelous product. This time it was the dusting powder. So over the next year, I kind of looked here and there, see if there were any other Marvelous products that came up that I wanted to buy. And it seemed like the second most abundant after the Rouge was the dusting powder. Now once again, my original thought was to take the container and kind of clean it up a little bit and then put my own dusting powder in it. But for about a year, there were not any tins that I thought were both in restorable condition and at my price point. So imagine my utter delight when I happened across this dusting powder. What makes this one so special, you ask? It is completely unused, still sealed, and what I didn't know is it came with an original powder poof and instructions. I saw this complete canister and I knew I had to have it. And when I saw the price, which was so comparable to the empties, I did not hesitate. Mm -mm. I hit buy it now. Bam, right there. So like the Rouge Compacts, this tin features the kneeling figure emblem holding the beauty jar. And the best part is because it is printed and not embossed, we see that she is in fact holding a beauty jar. The outside of the tin features fantastic Art Deco graphic design. The tin says, Dusting Powder, Marvelous. It also includes Richard Hudnut, New York, Paris. Oh, and the container was made in the USA. When you open up the container, it is a little dusty in there. There has been powder that has escaped over the years. However, it is still completely sealed and even includes the original cellophane that went over the sealed, sealed packaging to separate the powder poof from the powder itself. The circular powder poof is made from a very soft, possibly velveteen. It has marvelous and black printed on a red satin background with a little pocket that you can put your fingers in when applying your powder. It includes the original sanitized label so that you know your powder poof is fresh. The best part of this product though is the information sheet that came with it. This original information sheet taught me more about this product than any of the research that I've done online so far. Well, almost on it. The information sheet tells you a little bit about the history of the Richard Hudnut brand, as well as how to use its skincare products. It tells you not only how to wear your makeup, but which one complements your skin tone the best. My favorite part of this information sheet though, the product list. Guys, 
there's a marvelous deodorant, which I think is freaking amazing. Except the collector in me is going, where am I gonna find marvelous deodorant? I'm not. My collection's gonna be incomplete. And that's fine. Fine, whatever. Doesn't matter. So naturally, you're like, hey, what's the smell like, right? Sadly, the scent has been tainted, if you will, by that mildewy, I don't want to say moldy, but that mildew smell that kind of collects on vintage products over the years. And so the scent is still there. It's very, very, very faint. And while I want to be able to then like take that in and try to recognize the scent involved, it's kind of just like elbowed out of the way with that mildew smell. So fortunately I can't quite tell you what it smells like, but it's just an old vintagey, you know, perfumed powder smell. Not, not anything out of the ordinary. I mean, if you smelled this, regardless if it had the mildew smell, you would go, oh, that's a grandma smell. Which I hate because when you say it smells like a grandma, you make it sound like it doesn't smell good at all. And it smells fine. They're floral smells. They're soft. They're powdery. So for those of you that don't know, a dusting powder was just used to pat on your body to both silk in your skin and also scent it gently. Now the last time I remember seeing products like this readily available through all the cosmetic lines was back in the 90s. More so the 80s and it kind of like teetered out in the 90s. Now does that mean that modern uh, product lines don't carry dusting powder? No, it's just it's not as common. So remember how I told you it had been about a year between buying the rouge and the dusting powder? It wasn't like within an hour that I got emailed an eBay offer for a discount on a marvelous lipstick tube that I had in my watch list for goodness who knows how long. It was just a little out of my perceived price range so I kind of just watched it. But I find it really funny that I bought one off of Etsy and then next thing I know I get an eBay offer and it wasn't like so heavily discounted but it was discounted enough and I was in the was in the zone of just buying this brand new you know dusting powder I accepted the offer and I bought the tube of lipstick now this tube of lipstick the condition is not great it's not it's not terrible it's not great it just needs a super duper cleaning it still contains some of the original lipstick in it only the original lipstick has separated and the oils and the waxes have kind of like gunked up the tube itself which is the lever to push up the lipstick non-functional it has seized it will not budge but I figure I figure once I clean that out and give it a good scrubbing I'm hoping that it will allow the lever to move again so that if I'm ever able to refill this lipstick that I then have the option of it working now one amazing thing about this particular tube of lipstick is that it still has the original product sticker so this is fun because I get to match up the color of the lipstick with the product name this one happens to be the patrician for the gray eyes looking at the lipstick now remember it's been years the product has separated so who knows if this is the original color, but if it is, it's very orange, much like the non-used rouge I have. So I don't know if they were so matchy-matchy that the rouge would match the lipstick, like in color completely, but if that's the case, that rouge is most likely patrician for gray eyes as well. So the lipstick case is metal. I don't know if it's tin or aluminum or lead, whatever it's made out of, I am unsure. But this also has very Art Deco lines, which is nice. Very small letters that have been engraved at the bottom by the lever. It says Marvelous, made in the USA. And then as you turn it around, it'll say Paris, Richard Hudnut, Distributor, New York. Now, as I said, the bottom sticker does say American Beauty, Gray Eyes, Patrician Type. And then the final marker is right there on the top of the lid, which is Richard Hudnut's little design. Two R's mirrored back to back, which also help create an H in the center. Now my final 
product came about a week later. How this one happened is that I was doing a little more research for this video actually, and while looking for examples and photos and whatnot, I realized that this item that I had not seen for sale yet was up for sale. What is that item? It is the mascara case. <laughs> Hi, editing Lolita here. So after I just said I have never seen one of these for sale before, lo and behold, I come across an old blog post that somebody had posted using a photo of a marvelous ad. I left a comment. Let me read you that comment right now. I love this. I have an empty mascara tin from this brand and want to refill it. Do you know when I posted this? November 8th, 2010, 11 years ago. So apparently I now have two mascara cases, neither of which have a brush, but yeah. So for me, having said I've never seen one before, apparently it was my first marvelous purchase 11 years ago. Now, sadly, this did not come with the original brush, nor did it come with the original mascara, which is fine. I figured that if I came across another one of these that did have the original contents, I could always just replace that with this one, or replace this one with those, you know. Once again, I was on a purchase high, having just purchased the dusting powder and the lipstick a week before that... Buy it now. Buy it now. Now this case also features my preferred kneeling figure on the black background. It has the Art Deco grooves that line all of its products. When you open it, it also has a mirror. Now this one has been gunked. I think this mirror is less of a glass mirror and more of like one of those sticker mirrors of better quality. It's like the polished metal that makes it a mirror. So I don't know if this gunk, I haven't tried cleaning it yet, but I don't know if this is the silver being worn off or if this is stuff on top of it. I'll get to that when I restore it and clean it, but right now I'm not gonna touch it. The bottom is made out of a heavy duty molded plastic, which is actually surprising. I figured it would be a flimsy plastic insert, but I understand why they do the plastic bottom. The way that cake mascara was used is that you would wet the brush, rub it into the cake, and then apply it to your eyes so that moisture would have damaged the metal that the rest of it was made out of. So if it was like soaking in, it would just have disintegrated the bottom. On the bottom, it just says Marvelous Rigid Hood Nut Made in the USA. So that is my small collection of Marvelous cosmetic products. I have yet to find any in the wild, but I feel like maybe I've seen them in the past, but I never picked them up. And now that I picked them up, I'm not seeing them anywhere, but I'll keep my eye out for them. In the meantime, I don't mind purchasing these online. I do hope you enjoyed this video of show and tell. I was really excited to share this with you. And in fact, I wanted to do so much more. Like I wanted to dive into like the history of Richard Hudnut and the history of Marvelous and go in by product by product. And like I said, since I originally wanted to do color matches, I was gonna like wait until I had all the colors so that I could present those to you all at the same time as well. And I just thought, girl, calm down. Just bring it down a notch and just share your collection first and see where it goes from there. You know, maybe y'all out there will be interested in a cosmetic color comparison, or maybe you want to hear more about the history of the product line and the company it came from. But if you are interested in learning a little bit more in-depth detail about the history of the product line as well as the history of the creator, you can check out my latest blog post at vintagestarlet.blogspot.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel. But most importantly, comment below. Let me know which vintage cosmetic product that you've never tried is your favorite. Of course, you can follow me on all my social medias at the Lolita Hayes. You can find me on Instagram, on Facebook, on MySpace, on TikTok, on pretty much anything. The Lolita Hayes. So with that, go out and make the world an even more beautiful place by just being you. Unless you're an asshole.